Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Mother and son murdered in Manchester. Investigators are seeking to determine the motive for the murder of a mother and her son in Manchester. The bodies of 53-year-old Altero and her son, 35-year-old Cleon Palmer, were found about 11 o'clock Tuesday morning at their home in Providence Christiana. Investigators theorize that the two were killed on Saturday by unknown assailants. Mrs. Rowe's sister, Doreen Rowe, says the deceased was a good person who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She told reporters that her sister was visiting her son when she was killed. She said family members have been trying to make contact with Mrs. Rowe since Saturday but were unsuccessful. Mandeville couple found dead in suspected murder-suicide. Police were on the scene of a suspected murder-suicide involving a couple of Bonito Crescent in Mandeville. Relatives named the deceased as Stephanie and Ricky Ellis, both in their 40s. Reporters understand that the wife was employed as a loan officer at a financial institution in the parish. The husband operated a taxi for years. A senior police source told reporters that about mid-afternoon on Tuesday, the police in probing a missing person's report after the woman didn't turn up at work, went to the couple's home where the body was found with a wound to her forehead. The man was subsequently found hanging from a scaffolding. Grieving relatives were at the scene. Major probe underway into cocaine bus at Norman Manor International Airport. A major investigation is underway into the circumstances surrounding the seizure of 12 kilograms of cocaine at Norman Manor International Airport in Kingston on Monday. The police say about 7 a.m. during routine security checks, quantities were detected on a suitcase designated for the United States of America. A search of the luggage revealed that illicit drug with an estimated street value of US $600,000 was a part of the suitcase. The owner of the suitcase, who is a national of both the US and Jamaica, reported the fled the airport but was later held during a manhunt in the Kingston 6 era. He was arrested for reasonable suspicion of breaches of the Dangerous Drug Act. However, his identity is being withheld pending further investigation. At least four people shot during illegal New Year's Eve gun salutes. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting that several persons were shot and injured during illegal New Year's Eve gun salutes yesterday morning. In a tweet yesterday afternoon, JCF spokesman Dennis Brooks disclosed that at least four people, including a teenager watching fireworks, were shot. Additionally, an elderly woman who was asleep in her bed was also wounded as a result of one of those illegal New Year's gun salutes. In the comprobing shooting at Palisades involving off-duty policemen. In the comments probing an incident in which a man was shot by an off-duty policeman along the Palisades main road in St. Andrew yesterday morning. It's reported that the policeman and his mother were among persons watching the fireworks along the airport road when she got into a dispute with an individual. It's alleged that the man used his vehicle to hit down the elderly woman. The policeman reportedly reacted in defense of his mother. It's further alleged that the man attempted to use the vehicle to hit the policeman who in response drew his gun and opened fire. The man was shot and taken to hospital. The police have not yet provided any details of the incident. One in custody following firearm a seizure in St. James. One man is in custody after the St. James police seized a firearm and ammunition along with other illegal items during a joint police military operation in Canterbury District in the parish on Saturday. Reports are that about 12.40 p.m., lawmen carried out a search of a premises and one Browning 9mm pistol fitted with a magazine containing six cartridges was found in a room. Police said during an additional search, seven cellular phones, one tablet, and 34 letter-sized paper identity information assumed to be that of persons living overseas were found. Investigations are ongoing. Trelawney New Year's Eve scratch victims identified. Police have identified the three people who lost their lives in a New Year's Eve car crash in Trelawney. Two of the deceased are Trelawney residents. 22-year-old Latani Mendez from Friendship and 23-year-old Sian Isson from Granville. The third person who died in the crash is 19-year-old Eurasian Williams from Cornwall Court in Montego Bay, St. James. The two men and a woman died from injuries sustained during a three-vehicle collision on the Flamingo Main Road in the parish. The Trelawney Police report that about 11.45 p.m., they were among nine people traveling in three cars when the collision took place. 
All nine were injured and taken to hospital, where the three individuals were pronounced dead and the others admitted. Two killed in separate confrontations with members of the military. A suspect was shot dead during a reported confrontation with members of the military in Olympic Gardens, St. Andrew, yesterday morning. The suspect was fatally shot shortly after midnight during a confrontation on Balcombe Drive. Two illegal guns and 12 rounds of ammunition were reportedly seized. And another suspect was fatally shot during a confrontation with a military team in Admiral Town, West Kingston, yesterday morning. He has been identified as Christopher Spence. It's reported that an illegal gun with several rounds of ammunition was taken from him. Reporters were informed that a third suspect was shot by members of the military in Denham Town early yesterday morning, but no details have been provided. On Monday, January 2nd, 2022, about 12.02 p.m., Shane Hallen Patterson, a 33-year-old personal trainer of West London, Great Britain, was shot and killed by unknown assailants at a villa in Bogue Heights, St. James. It was reported that Patterson came to Jamaica on December 29, 2022 on a Virgin Airline flight at the Sangstas International Airport along with a male companion who is a construction worker of an Harlan Road, London address. They spent three days at an apartment then subsequently booked at a villa in Bogue Heights, St. James for five days starting January 1st, 2023 at 5 p.m. On that day, they attended a popular concert in Priory, St. Anne, where they met up with one O'Shane Richards, O.C. Shabba, construction worker of a Kingston 13 address. Richards was deported from the UK in May 2013 after his conviction and a prison term of 33 months for possession of crack cocaine. On Monday, January 2nd, 2023, about 5 a.m., they returned to the villa accompanied by O'Shane Richards. All three reportedly retired to bed in separate rooms. About 12 midday on Monday, January 2nd, Patterson woke up and went to the pool deck along with Richards and they were both talking on their phones. Richard reported that his back was turned to Patterson when he heard several loud explosions sounding like gunshots. He reported that he looked around and saw a lone man dressed in a black hooded sweatshirt with a handgun shooting Patterson. Richard allegedly ran off in bushes. The police were summoned and on arrival, Patterson was seen clad in a gray shorts on his back in a pool of blood with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the upper body and head. From credible information received, Shane Patterson is well known to the UK authorities and has an extensive criminal record for a number of offenses which include narcotics, violence and firearm. Our investigation so far has theorized that the murder was a contract killing that emanated from Britain. There's no evidence that Patterson was robbed or has any connection in Jamaica. The investigation is making significant progress and we are working with our international partners. If anyone has information they think can assist this investigation, please call Crime Stop at 311 or police emergency at 119 or the NIB tick line at 811. It is very unfortunate and sad circumstance that I report that about 9.30 this morning, Corporal Horace McDermott of the Westmoreland Division was found in his house with a gunshot wound to his head and his firearm close to his body. On the face of it, it appears to be a suicide. However, the investigation is ongoing and we await the outcome of the investigation. I just want to appeal to other members of the JCF out there that if you need help, there are mechanisms within the force to address these things, such as the chaplaincy services and the medical services branch. Uh, the members of the Westmoreland Division are in a very somber mood. 
uh, especially those who were very close to Mr. McDermott. And I just want to take this opportunity to offer my condolences on behalf of the, the Westmoreland Division to the family and relatives of Mr. McDermott, as also to the wider, the JCF, the Westmoreland Police and the wider JCF. She loved her baby, says Dan of Jamaican, held for killing three-year-old in U.S. Jamaican Jalisa Boxer, who is accused of stabbing her three-year-old daughter, are estimated to death in Florida, USA last week, loved her baby. Her father, Mr. Boxer, vouched for that. I am not saying that what she did was right. She did what she did was wicked. I condemn it. But the way I know she loves her child, she could not be in her right mind to do what she did, he told reporters in an interview. The 24-year-old mother is suspected of killing her daughter at their North Miami Beach apartment last week Tuesday before calling the police to report the matter. Speaking to reporters, Mr. Boxster said he raised his daughter in a Christian home and no matter what she did, she never strayed far from how she was raised. He said Jalisa was a good child who did what normal teens did while growing up. She doesn't drink or smoke or anything like that. Since she gone up, migrated to the U.S., I never hear that she lights a cigarette, he said. He said he too wants to know what happened to cause his daughter to do what she did to his granddaughter. She loved her baby. The child meant everything to her. Someone in their right mind couldn't do that, he insisted, bemoaning the death of his only grandchild. Sharing some insight about Jalisa, Mr. Boxer said she was struggling financially and with her daughter's illness. My granddaughter was going through some illness. I am not sure if the child was diagnosed, but they suspect that she was artistic, he told reporters. Mr. Boxer said he was close to his daughter and spent time with his granddaughter, who was in Jamaica from the beginning of 2022 to June, that year, when she went back to Florida to her mother. He said Jalisa said nothing that would alarm him that she could kill her child. Persons who saw a video of her in court are saying that she isn't showing any remorse, but for her to be remorseful. She has to realize that she has done what hasn't come to that yet, the father said. He told reporters that he's trying as best as possible to cope by staying away from some of the comments on social media while taking comfort in knowing that those who knew her did not make some of those most distasteful comments. People who don't know her and see what she did will say she is wicked and she is wrong to kill the baby. I condemn it, but something must have gone wrong, he insisted. Jalisa is in police custody in Florida. She is charged with first-degree murder and aggravated child abuse and had her band denied when she appeared in court last Wednesday. St. Andrew mother and infant son reported missing. The halfway tree police are seeking the public's help to locate a mother and her infant son who has been reported missing. Being sought are 18-year-old Xavier Williams and her two-month-old son, Zachary, who are from Walton Park Road in St. Andrew. The police say the mother and son have been missing since Monday, January 2nd. Xavier is of dark complexion, slim build, and is about 5 feet 5 inches tall. The child is also dark of complexion. The police say Williams and her son were last seen in their community about 5.15 p.m. on Monday. When last seen, they was wearing a green and white blouse, blue shorts, and a pair of white slippers. Efforts made to contact them have proven futile. Anyone near the reports of Ziva Williams and Zarek is being asked to contact the halfway tree police at 876-926-81845, police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Fisherman last seen in community before heading to sea, missing for a year. 53-year-old Michael Clark, a fisherman of Bird Mountain, Westmoreland, has been missing since July 19, 2021. He is of dark complexion, stout build, and about 178 centimeters tall. Reports from the Whitton police are that Clark was last in his community before heading to sea. His mode of dress at the time he went missing is unknown, and all efforts to contact him have proven futile, the police said. Anyone near the reports of Michael Clark is asked to contact the Whitton police at 876-957-7713. 119 Police Emergency Number or the nearest police station. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.